hydrology and things like that, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I want to know, where do you think your water comes from? So with a raised hand, somebody tells me, somebody tell me where your water comes from. Anywhere, any guess. Yes, sir. Any water source, rivers, lakes. Rivers, lakes, okay. some kind of water source. Okay, yes, sir. The Flint River, excellent, excellent, very good. Where else? What else? Dams. The what? Dams. I'm half deaf, so you just have to holler at me. Dams. Dams. You're right, exactly. Well, let's let's talk more about that. All right, so we have two bodies of water that feed our drinking water here in Spalding County, Pike County, uh, Coweta, Merriweather. So what are those bodies of water called? Well, we have a river that feeds both of these bodies of water. What are these big, large bodies of water called? Flint River. Mm -hmm. The river? Lake. What kind of lake? Has a very specific name. Reservoir. Reservoirs. Excellent. Does anybody know the name of the two reservoirs we have? Anybody? No? Well, you're going to learn today, so don't worry. If you don't know, you will learn. So, we are talking about where our water comes from. And so we have two different places, and I apologize, I am not 100% good with technology, which is probably not. Okay, so in Georgia, we have 14 major river basins. You want to know something really cool about Georgia and water? All of the water in Georgia basically starts in Georgia. We are the headwaters for all of the major rivers in Georgia, which means that's why we had such a problem with Alabama and Florida when they wanted more water, because all of the water in Georgia starts in Georgia. We don't actually get any flow through. All of it starts in Georgia. But the one that we're going to talk about today, but there's actually two of them, are something called watersheds. So who can tell me what a watershed is? A guess will work too. Yes? Somewhere where you store water. Somewhere where you store water is exactly right. That's a big part of it. What else? What is a watershed? Think about the word shed. Oh, runoff? Yes, runoff. Excellent. Very good. A watershed is any area of land where water drains off to a common point like a lake, a stream, an ocean any area of land. So it can be as small as your backyard or it can be as large as part of a state. So here we can kind of see the little red little red star over here, kind of sort of. This is actually marking Spalding County. So this is where we are right here. And you see that we're actually between or across two different watersheds. So here we have the Flint River and here we have the Ophmulgee River. So these two watersheds feed the water in Spalding County. The one that feeds our reservoirs is the Flint River. Now the Flint River is also, uh, I think, the third most endangered river in the United States. It is a beautiful river. Has anybody ever kayaked the Flint River? Oh, you haven't? You should, at one point in time, you need to kayak the Flint River. And I hope you can one day make that happen avail and, and more available to you. It is breathtaking. So to give you background why water is so important, I have to tell you why this river is so beautiful. It's amazing. You get out on your kayak in the morning and the mist has completely covered the river. It's completely silent. As you flow down the river, you start seeing animals, birds, fish. Um, there are blue holes, which are literally springs that come up in the water that are crystal clear and blue and they're so deep you can barely tell how deep they go. In fact, you can dive them, you can cave dive them. We have two species of animal that you can't find anywhere else on this side of the Mississippi River, and that is the blind cave salamander and the blind cave crawfish, and they're in the Flint River. So the Flint River is incredibly special, and it is where we get our water. Who can tell me where the headwaters of the Flint River are? Anybody know? How about a guess? It's in Georgia. It's someplace pretty famous in Georgia. Atlanta. It is in Atlanta, but let's let's get more specific. Where are the headwaters? It's this very, very famous place in Georgia. We're well known for it. Specific place. Come on, throw out some guesses. I bet you'll never guess it. 
Peachtree. The airport. It literally starts under a runway in the airport. That is where the Flint River starts, Atlanta Hartsfield. So this river goes down from where it starts at the airport. It gathers all these tributaries that come in and feed it and give it more water. And as it comes down to us, we pull water out in two different locations. So the first location is, and here you can see, here's the flint coming down. This is 92, so if you're going to Fayetteville, that's where it comes through. And it comes down, and this is our pumping station right here. And this pumping station pulls water from the Flint River, uh, and it processes it partially. And this is actually a brand new facility. So you can see here, it pulls water right here, and it goes into this building. And it's actually pumped 12 miles. Actually, there we go. There, there's the intake. Ha, there we go. Heads Creek Reservoir. Heads Creek Reservoir. If you like fishing, this is a great place to go. If you ever want to participate in a, a river cleanup or a trash cleanup, rivers alive, this is a great place to go because unfortunately people think it's a trash can. Yes, they think that our drinking water is a place to throw trash. I don't know how that works, but we're trying to solve that and fix that problem. But Heads Creek Reservoir is an absolutely beautiful place, and this is where our water goes. Now, I'm going to grab some detailed notes real quick, so that way I can tell you the right numbers. But Heads Creek, yes, so it's a 300-acre lake. So 300 acres is all water. And it holds 621,000 gallons of water. What do you think of that? That's a lot of gallons. So it was built in 1965. And this is where we get our drinking water and have gotten our drinking water for a very long time. Now, this is way out on the edge of the county. So in order to get water to us, we have to pump it further along. So it goes from Heads Creek Reservoir to pumping station. Uh, here we go. So we're up here. This is the reservoir. And we pump it long way, all the way into Griffin. And right here is Harry Simmons Water Treatment Plant. Has anybody ever been to the ball fields over, um, what is that, Flint Street? On, yeah. On 1941, the expressway, you know the ball fields that are back there, near the Science Center? Yeah. yeah. That building, you know, it has the big giant water tank with Griffin on it? That is Harry Simmons' water treatment plant. This water treatment plant is really, really cool. It was built, I'm out, I want to make sure I get this, built in 1929. 1929. Here's the coolest part. For me, I think it's really cool. Because of the way we take care of our water, the way we process water, the way we clean it, and we provide it to the public safely, <laughs> that building has never been empty. It has never been without a person in it since 1929. Literally, there has been a person in that building since 1929. Think about that. Never empty. There's always a person there because we're always making sure that the water coming in is being processed properly and going out to homes. Right? People need water even sometimes in the middle of the night. People work night shift, right? So we have to make sure this water is flowing properly. So this is 12 miles from the Flint River. So we have 12 miles of pipe, piping from Heads Creek Reservoir to the Flint River. I mean, I'm, pardon me, to Harry Simmons. And that is where it's clean. So the first thing that we do to clean this water, because it is raw water, it's coming off the river, it has not been cleaned in any way yet, so we need to go ahead and start to process it. We want to get all the junk out of it. So biggest, uh, best way to do that is to have a system of ponds, yes, small ponds, small little bodies of water, where that water can start to allow anything in the water to settle. Have you ever gotten um, a cup of hot chocolate and when you're done drinking it, you notice that some of it settled to the bottom. Yeah? It's kind of a similar idea. So we take the water from the river and we put it into these ponds and anything that's in the water starts to settle out. 
Well, you know, we have particles in the water that really don't like to settle out. They're so tiny that they will stay suspended in that water column no matter what. So we add some chemicals, specific ones, to the water that will allow these particles to bunch together. They become heavy and they sink to the bottom. And that's called flocculant. So this flocculant settles to the bottom of those ponds, those trays, and the clean water with no stuff in it goes off the top and into the next pond. And we do that over and over and over again. It goes through several ponds, back and forth, back and forth. So that way, clean water comes off the top over and over and over again. So we also filter it. So it goes through a filter, a very fine filter, and that will pull any other particles out of the water. And then we do add some other chemicals. So things like chlorine are added. And the whole purpose, what do you think the purpose of chlorine is? What is it? Kill germs, exactly, it's to kill bacteria. The whole point of chlorine though is you want to get as much of it out of your water before it hits your pipes. So that the water that is going into your pipe, that is going to go to a water tower next and then to your house, should not have a lot of chlorine in it. By the way, if you ever turn on your faucet and you smell that chlorine, it's because chlorine can turn into a gas. It's going to evaporate out of your water and oftentimes if it hits your sink and there's anything dirty at the bottom of the sink, that's when you smell it doesn't mean there's a ton of it in there. So the next place that this goes I'll show you Harry Simmons. So that's Harry Simmons. Is our water towers. So did anybody participate? Has anybody ever participated in the water tower competition? Model water tower competition? Okay. Well then I'm going to ask you guys. Explain to me how does a water tower work? What is the purpose of a water tower? Like you can uh, pump water into it, and then you have kind of like a big faucet down at the bottom where you can release it into different types of pipes, and it'll go into your homes or anything like that. Excellent. Very good. Where do you think we put our water towers? Do we just put them anywhere? Excellent. Very good. So we don't use, for the most part, we do not use a pumping system to get water to your homes. The only time it's pumped is when we pump it into the water tower. So we pump it into the water tower, which are specifically placed at higher elevations. And that way, now it's up high. So what happens? What takes hold? Gravity. Gravity, exactly. So gravity, these gravity-fed towers, feed the water that goes out. When you think about it, it's actually a really cool visual. Think about all that water way up high in the air, and then gravity. And then you release it. You open up that valve to release it to homes. And all that water rushes down those pipes and out to your homes. So that's how you get water pressure. Now, I can tell you for a fact that sometimes that water pressure is way too high. I'm at the end of the line and that water pressure is really, really powerful. I could almost pressure wash my house with a hose. <laughs> we have things called pressure regulators on our water systems and that actually helps control when that water is powerful and when it's not. That way we don't have any situations where water comes into your home too powerful. So it goes to your home, it goes and you open up that faucet and you turn on the water and you use it. Well, where does that water go? Where does it go? After you used it. Flush the toilet, empty the sink. It goes back down to the drain. Okay, it goes into the drain. Where does it go from the drain? Cleaning facility, well, I, my personal home, does not have a cleaning, well, it has a, a, its own cleaning facility full of fantastic bacteria. That is a septic tank. Mine goes into a septic tank. However, if you are on our sewer system, on the wastewater side, it goes into a series of pipes that collect this wastewater, and it takes it to a water treatment facility, a wastewater treatment facility. We have four of those here in this county. And then that water is clean. And then what happens after it's clean? Where does it go? It goes back to the, water tower. Goes back to the river. So it is always a cycle. So we start out at the river, the Flint River. We pull that water out. It goes to our reservoir, or reservoirs, because I'm about to talk about the other one. And it goes to our water treatment plant. Then it goes to the water towers, goes to your house goes from your house to our wastewater system, to our wastewater treatment plants, and then it goes back out into the world, back out into nature, to be reused again. Now, the other place that we have a reservoir is, let's see where are we, right here. 
turn this off for just a second. The other site is in Pike County. I know, you think, wait, the city of Griffin has property in Pike County? So yes, we do. It's called the Still Branch Reservoir. Once again, if you like to fish, it is a beautiful place to go. I like to go out there and kayak. So just if you get the chance to visit Still Branch Reservoir, it's right there outside of Molina. It's a great place. This reservoir is pretty large. It was built in 2005. It came online fully in 2008. And it's 850 acres, the site is. 850 acres, that's a lot of acreage. And the lake itself is 475 acres. This reservoir holds 3.5 billion gallons of water. A million gallons of water. The whole point of our reservoirs is that they are a storage facility. They store our water. Why do we need to store water? Why would we need to store water? Okay, so in other words, when we're not constantly pulling out of a river, that's an excellent point. To, to also, so we learn better about not wasting it, which I got some fun things for you guys in just a second. What else? In case the water gets infected. Oh, that's a good one. So in other words, if there's a problem with your water source, one or the other, then maybe we need a safe source of water. That's a good point. What would be another reason why we would need to store water so that we need to make sure that we have it? Drought in case of like a crisis. Drought and crisis. That's an excellent point. Very, very good. That's exactly right. In 2007, 2008, uh, that was some of the hardest years we had, it was a huge drought. And when I say huge, I mean it was a bad drought. We had no rain, no rain, no rain, and the rain feeds the river, right? So we know that the way a watershed works, all that rain flows into little creeks and streams, and they flow into the Flint River, and the Flint River feeds our water. Well, what happens if there's no rain and no rain feeding the streams? Well, then the streams don't have any water, and they're not feeding the river, and the river has significantly less water. Well, the way our intake system is set up, if the water is not above a certain level in the river, we can't take, we can't pull in water. It's literally sitting above the water level. So we're ended up, we ended up without a lot of water. And I was in Atlanta at the time. And I tell you what, talk about an interesting situation. They came over the radio and they came over the news and they said, citizens of Atlanta, Atlanta, this huge city, they said, we need you to conserve as much water as possible, which means that you need to do everything in your power not to waste water. Don't wash your car. Don't use it for anything that could be considered wasteful that you don't absolutely need it for because we're actually running out of water. They gave us about a month left, a month of water. And they said, you have a month. And in a month, we are going to have to start turning your water off during the day. Yeah, that was a really scary feeling for us. So we had to do all kinds of things, all kinds of changes in our lives in order to save water. So I'm actually, I actually brought you something fun. Uh, well, I don't know if it's fun. You can take it home, you can use it, you don't have to use it, it's up to you. I brought you all water conservation kits. They have all kinds of stuff in here. It has a shower head, faucets, aerators, all kinds of fun things. Uh, so I'm gonna pass these out. Actually, let's see. <coughs> You come over here, you take this around, pass everybody, pass one out to everybody. Uh, and then I am actually, it's heavy. I am actually gonna talk to you a little bit about more what we do. So, we talked about one type of pipe system. Actually, we talked about two different pipe systems. We talked about the water pipe system. We talked about the wastewater pipe system. And do these run in the same pipes? they run in the same pipes? Do our water and our wastewater run in the same pipes? No, no absolutely not. Uh, but by the way, we have, and I'm, once again, I'm just trying to make sure I get this number right. We have over 185 miles, 185 miles of pipe, 185. That's a lot of pipes. So we have water pipes, we have wastewater pipes, and we also have stormwater pipes. So I am a watershed protection specialist for the stormwater department. So our job is to take all that rain, and when it's not going into the reservoir, it's not going into the Flint River, our job is to help direct that rain somewhere other than the basement of your home or a road. So we have piping systems all under 
So who's, uh, okay, well, you shouldn't have seen the movie It, but I know you probably have. So don't raise your hand, but you know what I'm talking about. If you've seen the movie It, I want you to think about this. Don't think about the scene in the Georgie. beginning. But yeah, Georgie, poor Georgie. Anyway, so at the beginning of the movie, <laughs> Pennywise the Clown is hiding in a what? Storm. A storm drain. That's exactly it. Don't worry, we don't have any clowns in our storm drains. Thank you, sir. So, Pennywise the Clown is hiding in a storm drain. So, where does the water go when it goes down a storm drain? Pipes, where do they go? Back to the lake. What? Into the river. Very good. Our storm systems are separate from our water system, from our wastewater system. They're completely separate. So that means when water goes down those drains that you see in the sidewalk or the grates in the ground, that water is going straight to a stream or a creek in Spalding County. It's not filtered, it's not cleaned. Not the way the old system's set up. Now these systems pretty old, it's about 100 years old. So it's our job to make sure that it is constantly being updated. So we have to go in, we have to put a new pipe in, uh, we have to make sure that they're not being blocked because if we have a blocked storm drain or blocked pipe, what's going to happen to that water? That's exactly right. You're going to have pressure build up. You have something that goes down a storm drain that should go down a storm drain like leaves or sticks or grass clippings or somebody's dumped something down the storm drain that they shouldn't and that starts to build up all that trash. That pressure is going to build up, build up, build up, and that water is going to come back out of the storm drain, and it's going to flood. So part of our job is to make sure that these piping systems are clean and clear and are working properly. So I brought something fun today to show you. Uh, this is, uh, I didn't introduce Ariel, but I'm going to introduce her now. This is Ariel Blanton. She is my fantastic coworker and partner in crime, and uh, not crime. Uh, and we're going to show you some of the equipment that we use pretty much every day. This is a pole camera that we use and it, you know, we have a handy dandy little tablet which we can take everywhere. And yes, it has a waterproof case on it because it has been dropped in more than one street. So this camera is fantastic. It actually records, all right, everybody get up. Come on, get up, come over here. So it actually records everything we can see. We can see quite a ways. So Ariel, if you can, do you think we can point it? We can point it at the back of the room. Um, let's see. I want. Uh, let's see. You go to the back of the room. All the way to the very back corner. We'll see if we can see back there. Wait, which one? This is keep going, keep going. We'll see how far we can see it. Um, let's see. Can you see it? Oh, I'll be able to. We may need to move. So we use this pole camera as she walks through to see through the pipes. Okay. So we put this thing downside. Yeah, we get we get over to you know you see those. Once again, you go over to those kind of semi-creepy storm drains. We pull open those grates, and we put this down, and it looks into the pipe. So the whole point of this is so that we can see what is through this pipe. Now, we see all kinds of cool stuff down there. And I don't mean just like trash, because that's scary stuff. But we see, you can see adjoining pipes. You can see when roots have penetrated through the pipes. You can see when there's a crack in the pipe. You can see when there's a student at the back of the room. Uh, turn. I'm going to turn on the, the light. Okay. Let's see. So I can also do all kinds of stuff. So if I want to go up, I can go down. I can go in or out. Oops. There we go. I can zoom in. I can zoom in. I can zoom in. Turn it all the way. Look at that. Turn it slightly to your right. Go the other way, left, left, All right. left, right there, stop, keep going, right, left, I mean, I can't, I don't know my direction. This way? I don't know, we've missed him completely. I don't know where he is. Here. I can't find him anymore, he disappeared. He doesn't exist. All right, we found a sign. So anyway, you can see that we can actually see clearly all the way to the back of the room. 
we can see in detail. This takes video, so we can record everything we see. And because of the way our piping system is, uh, is made, is designed, we can actually count the joints in the pipe to tell us exactly how far in we have a problem. So this allows us to fix some of our major issues. So that's kind of important because if we have a blockage in this system, it can cost us, or a break in this system, it can cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars to replace these pipes. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So the other thing that's really cool about this system, uh, so we have the pole camera, and this is the one that we slide down into, uh, into where the pipes are and we look into the holes into the ground. But the other system that we have is called the possum, and the possum is used for water, wastewater, and can be used for stormwater. And the possum is basically an RC car on a, on a, on a cable. So we can literally drive this thing. We have a, a whole trailer. We pull up, we put this little RC car down into the pipes, and then we drive it through the pipes and take video. So that's fun until the possum gets stuck, and then you're trying to get, get back out of the hole by cable. It's, that's not fun. So. Okay, everybody have a seat. Um, I would, but I don't know if they, they're not going to be able to all see it. projects or future competitions. Tell me about what you're doing. Oh. I didn't make the <laughs> um, Come on, somebody knows the problem. Okay. We don't know. Okay. No, no, we don't know. We have something. Okay. That was our problem. That was our problem. Solution to the problem was thermal tape. Okay. So in other words, insulation. Some kind of insulation on the pipe system that's going to allow that water to move. Yep. All right, very good, very good. I like that. That's a, that's an interesting uh, solution to the problem. Guys, tell her about the different emissions that you're completing on the field. Oh, one of them is Oh, your robot has to navigate the course to like pick up this old corroded pipe and go replace it with a new one. Oh, I want one of those. That would be awesome. So when we when we have to replace pipe, it is a significant amount of work that we have to do. And I'm not just talking about the digging up the pipe and removing of the pipe and replacing it with a type type of pipe, a certain type of pipe. Okay, so when you replace a pipe. You have to often block off a road, and that's always difficult. People really don't prefer that. Uh, so you go off, you take out your section of pipe, you dig down into the ground, you dig all the way down. Now there's two different ways we can do this. We can either fill this pipe with concrete and fill it so that it is one whole thing, it's no longer pipe, replace it and put a new pipe on top of it, or we can pull the old pipe out and put a new pipe in. Now. Going to what you guys were talking about, we've actually changed some of our materials of our pipes. So originally, what were our pipes made of? Burial? What was the original piping in Griffin? Do you know? It was metal. It was terracotta. It went way, way, way back when. It was terracotta. So what happens to a terracotta or pottery if it gets too cold? It cracks, exactly. So we can immediately see problems, water loss, uh, shrinking, swelling, cracking. They're not very flexible. Okay, so then we went to, what kind of material do you think we went to? Copper. We went to metal. We went to metal. And if we can't do copper because you think about the sheer amount of piping, 185 miles of pipe, and that much copper, that's really, really expensive. So we went to large, with what we call corrugated metal pipes. And you've seen them, right? They're, they're lumpy and they usually look rusty. That's because they shouldn't be used anymore. So these old corrugated metal pipes, they eventually do what? They collapse, they rust, they collapse. 
So they have significant problems. So as we get better and better at what we do, we find better materials. So now we're using one called HDPE. And HDPE is a very, very strong material that is a plastic polymer base and with some rubber in there, rubberizing. Uh, and it is also waved, and there's some really good reasons why it's waved. And that's for mainly, I'm talking about stormwater now. But what do you think is cool about this pipe and the material that it's made of? What do you think it does when it's cold? It insulates. It insulates. Very good. It insulates, and what else? We talked about hot, cold. It can shrink and it can swell. So this makes sure that your piping system, the thing that is carrying all your water, is not going to have an occasion where it's going to be caused to leak unless you drop a truck on it, which you know, don't do that. So, um, okay, questions for me? Anything? So, when you're checking the water, do you occasionally have to check the pH of the water? Absolutely. We uh, check, um, so there's a lot of occasions where you check the pH of water. So if we're going back to, I'm going to first start with our water, that our drinking water, okay? So when you're checking the pH of your drinking water, can somebody tell me why you think you would check the pH of drinking water? Make sure it's safe to drink. Make sure it's safe to drink. Okay, that's a good point. Um, somebody tell me a pH that you might consume, a liquid that you might consume, or what the pH might be. Seven. Okay, seven. What is seven what? Is... On the pH scale, it's considered what? Right in the middle, it's neutral, right? It's neutral. You want your water and your milk to be neutral or as close as possible. So seven is fantastic. Now, what's Coke? That's 10. It's alkaline or is it acidic? Uh, so you go down. Remember, acid goes from seven to zero. The closer it is to zero, the stronger the acid. So your stomach acid is around a 2 to a 1, depending on what kind of food you're consuming. Um, a good example, and I'm going to, uh, so this is my favorite example, because I'm a naturalist, I'm a biologist, I'm a Georgia master naturalist, so I love animals. A, a black vulture, the, uh, their stomach acid is a 1, because they have to digest all that stuff. In Yellowstone National Park, in the geysers, that are over that caldera, that old volcano, mm -hmm. the liquid in those things, they're about a one, and it can dissolve a human being in 30 minutes. We found that out last year when someone fell in it. Um, yeah. Completely dissolved his body in 30 minutes. They just found car keys. That was it. That was all that was left. Yeah, so <laughs> acids, closer to zero, very, very powerful. By the way, if you ever go to Yellowstone, please stay on the path. Don't go over to the, you know, the geysers, it's not safe. So, on the other hand, on the other side, when we go from z a 7 in the middle to 14, we're getting stronger and stronger as a base or an alkaline. Okay?